I often get contacted by companies who want me to review various products and services. And in most cases, I decline it outright because I simply don't think it would fit on the channel and I think you don't think you guys would be interested in it. But this, this caught my attention. This video is sponsored by Lexip. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy. Today we're taking a look at the Lexip 3DM Pro, which is a 6-axis mouse. So that means that this thing has two built-in joysticks, which could potentially make it one of the best mouse for Elite Dangerous. First we're going to go over the physical layout of the mouse, and then we're going to go and look at the included software, which uh, has some unique features. And then finally we're of course going to take this into Elite, try to uh, fly around with it for a bit and uh, see how it actually performs in uh, real gameplay. But first, the layout of the mouse. I want to start underneath the mouse because you can actually see here that the base plate, the plate that actually touched the table, is not directly attached to the top of the mouse. And that's because this is where we find our first joystick. Actually, the whole body of the mouse is a joystick in itself because it can tilt back and forth and from side to side. So that's our first joystick. Um, when we move around to the side of the mouse, we can see here we find our second joystick, the small thumbstick, also analog, I should say. And the side of the mouse has rubberized grips, which you of course are going to need when you're going to tilt the mouse from side to side. It's very important that you have a very firm grip of the mouse so your fingers don't slip. Um, so very well designed and generally the, the mouse is very well thought out, I think. Um, on the left hand side of the mouse, we also find backup and forward button, which is fully programmable. Actually, every single button on this mouse is full grammar, even left and right click, you can program to anything you want. Moving over to the uh, top of the mouse, we uh, of course have left and uh, right mouse click, we have a scroll wheel and we have a um, what's right now bound to as a DPI button to control the DPI of the mouse. But again, fully programmable, you can do with it whatever you want. And first I thought it was a little weird that there's this huge um, edge at the front of the mouse where the mouse buttons don't really um, go. Um, and then I realized after using it for a while that you of course are going to need this when you're tilting the mouse back and forth. You need somewhere to rest your hand so that you don't accidentally click the, uh, the buttons when you apply pressure to tilt the mouse forward. So again, very well thought out here um, definitely stuck out of thought into to designing this product. Um, and that's pretty much it for the physical tour. Um, the mouse itself is fairly light. It's a little bit smaller than, um, than what I'm used to. I have fairly large hands. Um, so you're definitely going to use some kind of a, 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 a claw grip. You're not going to palm it completely unless you have small hands. Um, the lightness of the mouse is um, enhanced by these uh, quite unique feet underneath um, that reduces the contact area with the table quite significantly meaning that the mouse slides across a table surface a lot easier than many other mouse that I've tried, making it feel even lighter. But despite its light feel, it doesn't really feel cheap. I've never had the feeling that it was about to break on me or was afraid that I was going to break something. Um, so build quality wise, I have absolutely no complaints. Let's have a look at the included software. Here we can see on the main screen we have um, sensitivity controls for the mouse itself and also the scroll wheel, which of course is something you can do natively in Windows, so nothing that special there. If we move over to options, it gets a little bit more interesting. Here we can see first we can actually control all the buttons. This is the left mouse button and we can switch that to DPI if we wanted to. Um, we had set up, but we could do that. Um, and we can also see here we can go take the joystick button here we can assign whatever we want. We can also go down and assign key combinations to keyboard inputs. So we have pretty much a fully customizable mouse here. The back and forth button here customizable, the scroll wheel is customizable, even the click. The, the scroll axis can be bound to a joystick axis if you want that instead. This is the DPI button that's currently unbound, which you can do whatever you want to. Um, so again, very, very customizable. If you move over to the axis tab here, we can see that we can now adjust the stick up, stick down, which is the thumbstick, and also the translation. Uh, this is the rolling of the mouse left or right, and the pitching up and down, which we have down here. We can see right now this is not bound, but this is because I'm not um, I'm not in any game. We can see here there are different uh, profiles, and that actually has several different profiles I've made here for Dangerous already. I think number three is the one 
yeah, we see here number three I've already assigned. I was playing around with this, so it's a little silly right now, the up-down arrow here for backwards and forward, but... Never mind that. Anyways, I was playing around with the profiles, um, so you can set up predetermined profiles for all your games if you are planning to use this in, in, uh, in other games. DPI control over here, if you want to set that manually without using the DPI button, of course. Um, so yeah, generally I think it's a, it's a very decent um, piece of software, especially because you can program all of these and the number of options here is, is very, very good, I think. But let's, uh, let's take this thing and let's uh, play some uh, Elite Dangerous with it. So I took my cover out to uh, hunt some NPCs because I feel like a combat situation is a situation where you need the best control over your ship, which makes it ideal to test a product like the mouse I have here. Initially, just when I started, I didn't feel like I have the same level of control over my ship as I do when I play with a HOTES setup. Um, but after about 20 minutes to half an hour, it began to become more and more natural. So I think it was pretty much just down to the fact that this is quite a unique design and something that you know I'm not used to, as I think no one's used to, uh, to playing with a device like this. Um, and the fact that you have to adapt a, a slightly different technique than what you might be um, used to, what you might find intuitive. Because at the beginning I would often rest my fingertips at the bottoms and then move them up to that ledge we talked about whenever I need to tilt. But all that moving my fingers back and forth meant that I could... It was a hard time keeping my weapons firing while I was tilting, so I very quickly after, after that about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I began to notice that what I did instead was I just... By, it felt very natural, but I just began to rest my fingers permanently on that ledge and then use the middle of my finger, so like the second um, part of my finger instead of my fingertips, to actually activate the uh, left and right, right mouse button. And it very quickly began to be, feel more and more natural. So you do need to, to adapt a little bit to, uh, to using a, a product like this. Um, Another thing that I, I still found a little difficult was using the thumbstick when I was either pitching fully forward or fully backwards. Um, for some reason, when I when I had uh, full tilt either forward or backwards, I didn't feel like I had the same level of control. It was not that the joystick was not responsive at all. It was just difficult for me to get it into a uh, to get my hands in a position where I could have a, a fine control over that, uh, that joystick at the same time. But again, uh, the same with the with the buttons and the tilting of the mouse, or the pitching of the mouse back and forth. I'm pretty sure that if I spent more time with it, I would probably begin to also learn how to use that. So it is a little bit of a learning curve um, if you want to be uh, effective. But I'm pretty sure that if I uh, if I spent a week or something uh, using this rather than my joystick, it would I would be as effective with a mouse like this as it would be with uh, with a joystick. So again, it's. Um, it's really just uh, something you have to learn um, and again it also depends on the situation you're in um, I also tried as you can see here to just do a, a simple docking and it was I mean it was very very easy to dock with I have of course my my pitch back and forth and uh, the roll um, mapped to the rolling of the body of the mouse and then I have uh, upwards and downwards um, thrust and sideways thrust mapped to the small thumbstick very um, easy to use for for docking so so again uh, it it works very very well but i can see that this is not um, a product for everybody um so who do i feel like would benefit the most from from using a product like this well I could see a situation maybe if you have a limited disk space um, and you don't have room on your desk for for some reason to a to a full holster setup, but you still want something that's a little bit closer to a joystick than just playing with mouse and keyboard. In a case like that, I could definitely see the Alexa 3DM Pro being a um, being a very, very valid um, valid option. Alternatively, let's. Uh, Let's say you want to uh, play on your laptop in the living room. In a situation like this, using a HOTUS is not really, I feel like at least not really an option. It's going to become very, very clumsy and HOTUSes are not really built for couches, to, uh, to be honest. Um, but in a situation like this, again, you could take your a mouse like this with you to the living room um, and you could easily play from the couch. I tried this briefly and it worked quite well. Um, so, so that's definitely an option. 
Um, alternatively, if you use a lap board um, to play Elite Dangerous, um, again, then if you're playing from a couch, the whole task is a little bit clumsy. So again, I could see this being useful um, in a couch gaming situation. Or if you maybe travel a lot with work, then you could very easily bring this mouse with you. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have that overly gaming RGB everywhere, uh, extreme gaming look to it. So if you're traveling with work, you could take it with you and you could easily use it in a, in a, in a business situation where without anybody noticing it being something special. And then when you were, were off and you had uh, your time off, you could still have a very good product for, um, for playing Elite Dangerous or other space sims or other sim flight games, maybe, whatever you want to, to use it for. But if you want more information about this product, there is a link in the description to the Kickstarter, because this is actually a, a Kickstarter campaign right now. So you can go over and you can... Um, um, you can pledge over on, uh, on Kickstarter if you're interested in the product. They also have a lot more technical specifications that I have not gone through in, the, in this video. Um, because if people are interested in that kind of um, um, level of detail, they would probably want uh, to go and read it for themselves anyway. So I've put a link for the, um, for the Kickstarter in, uh, in the description down below. But let me know in the comment section down below what you think of a uh, of a product like this. Is this something you would be interested in? And also let me know if you want to see more reviews of uh, of relevant products um, to uh, what I'm doing here on the channel. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.